My name is Horsed Noh, H-O-R-S-E-D, Noh, N-O-A-H. I'm the director of Seco Somali Islamic Centers of Ohio. Many, many years ago when I came to this country, the first people who met me at the airport were my family members. And I really felt a sense of love. I felt loved the same way I'm feeling today. I'm surrounded by people of love, people who are united by faith and love. And I think that is what all of our traditions instruct us to do. Love your neighbors, love your fellow human being, that with which you love yourself. America has always been the land of immigrant. We pride ourselves on that. We learn from each other. We're so beautiful when we are together. God Almighty says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhannasu inna khalaqnaakum min dhakarin wa untha wa ja'alnaakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu inna akramakum inda Allahi atqaakum which means, O mankind, and that is the first word God uses, O mankind, we have created you male and female, nations and tribes, so that the purpose is you need to come together and celebrate your diversity. You need to come together and learn from each other and love each other. This is a Muslim ban. And we need to reject that because it's an American. It's against everything that we pride ourselves upon. And last but not least, we will welcome, we applaud, and it's very commendable move, the steps taken by uh, Hawaii's, uh, the judge of Hawaii's federal court. We want all of you to understand that we are beautiful and strong when we come together as one family, when we embrace each other. Angie Plummer, and I'm the executive director of CRIS, Community Refugee and Immigration Services. And the federal court's rulings are a very encouraging first step. But as we know, there is still a refugee ban in effect until October 24th. Will there be another refugee ban issued before then? We don't know. What will the administration do next? We don't know. This continued effort at unconstitutional and unlawful discrimination against Muslims and refugees is making a mess of people's lives. Making a mess of families. Families are waiting for loved ones to join them. Vulnerable people who held out hope that they would get to start a new life have had their hopes crushed and the door's been shut. When I return to my office today, there will undoubtedly be people waiting, asking, when is my mother coming? When is my daughter coming? When is my son coming? I've been waiting for four years. President Trump re recently set the ceiling for the number of refugees who will be allowed to enter the U.S. this year at an historically no low number. This is at a time when the world's refugee crisis is at its worst. By abdicating our global responsibility and sharing in crisis, we're also abdicating our global influence and threatening the lives of millions of people. Last week, the administration released a statement of so-called immigration principles and policies, which says that there will be a new admissions criteria used to determine who gets to come into our country based on whether they're likely to assimilate. What does that even mean? And who gets to decide that? I am afraid of the answers. We need Congress to step up and finally put a stop to this administration's continuous attempts at an unconstitutional ban on Muslims and unlawful discrimination against certain nationalities. Freedom to practice one's religion, to be free from discrimination, are fundamental values that we must defend. Our core values as, as a nation are at stake and people's lives depend on it. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, shalom. My name is Imran Malik, spelled I-M-R-A-N, last name Malik, M-A-L-I-K. I'm representing the Outreach and the Interfaith Department of Nur Islamic Culture Center here today. Friends, colleagues, and community leaders, once again we stand here shoulder to shoulder in solidarity to raise our voice and concerns against bigotry and unjust approaches to those who are the most vulnerable in our communities. Whether they're Muslims, whether they're South Americans, whether they're Africans or Asians, it is unjust. Our country was formed on the principles and values of united we stand and divided we fall. But yet, once again, our elected leaders of the most highest office in this land are showing their disagreement to this. 
Mine and our collective concerns are not limited just to the local issues and impacts, but also to the global citizens. Our world is a global village. If America, the beacon of hope and symbol of the strongest democracy in the world, will choose to adapting policies and procedures that are raising walls instead of building, uh, building bridges, then my fear is what will happen to the helpless and the vulnerable of those places where tyranny, dictatorship, and aristocracy are the norms of government. The world sees us as trendsetters, believe it or not. I stand here with optimism that our collective love and care will be heard around the nation, and I pray that our elected officials, local, regional, and national, will serve with more integrity, care, and dignity towards the humanity of every ethnicity. I echo with you all that there should be no Muslim ban ever, and refugees are welcome here. God bless America, and thank you. My name is Suleikha Dahir Hussein. I'm with uh, Women's Network USA. Uh, I'm here today to talk about refugees and the problem we were facing back home. And what I'm saying is that in, I came from South Africa and I have, we have a lot of problems. If on that side we had uh, xenophobia, uh, they were killing us, you know, they were doing a lot of things to us wherever refugees and immigrants is. They have their own problems. So I'm against uh, about uh, and Muslim ban and refugees. What I'm saying is that there are a lot of people who were waiting to fly, you know, coming to USA. And now they have no hope. Because they were in South Africa or other places in 25 years, 30 years, just want to improve their lives and their children to go to the school. But now there's no hope for them. So I hope you are with me mm -hmm. and saying no to Muslim band uh, and refugees and immigrants. Any refugee has problems because if they have a peaceful place to stay, they wouldn't be coming to America. Mm -hmm. So when you see people running out from their own country, I'm telling you, we have a lot of problems. I had a lot of problems. But when I come to this country with my kids, they have a future, they have a life. They go forward. But if I was still in, back in South Africa, I knew that by this time, half of my kids maybe will be dead. So I'm begging you, please. I can see I have a lot of friends and, 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 and brothers and sisters. We have to support. We have to support and say no to Muslim and, 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 and refugees. Thank you so much. My name is Mark Deemer. I'm pastor at Grace of God Lutheran Church here on the west side of Columbus. We all agree that there are concerns and issues with the process for those who migrate from their homeland seeking a place of refuge and opportunity, as we just heard, to the shores of this country. There are certainly those who come to this country seeking to do harm to others. They should be stopped from entering. However, creating bans that eliminate people based upon religion or their nationality or the color of their skin not only makes it more difficult to identify those who would do us harm, it gives us a false sense of security and instills in others fear against others. Using fear to guide our policies will cause us to neglect effective ways to eliminate those who would come seeking to do us harm. And it places innocent people who are already at risk, even more at risk. As Christians and people of faith, our default position should not be one to eliminate people or keep them out. It should be one of openness and compassion. We must not let fear lead us into ways that further victimize the most vulnerable and create policies that put at risk those who are most at risk and demonize people because of their faith, nationality, or race. 
This ban on Muslim people will do precisely that. We say no, no Muslim bans ever. Is Usjid Hamid? That's spelled U S J I D H A M E E D. And I'm the public affairs coordinator for the Council on American Islamic Relations, Columbus, Ohio chapter. I would like to thank everyone for coming today to discuss the president's latest Muslim ban. Care Columbus, along with the Brennan Center, filed a lawsuit in the United States District Court of Maryland representing two Syrian origin plaintiffs from Columbus, Iblal Zakzuk and Sumaya Hamadmad. The court last night at 1 a.m. issued a ruling that held that the ban could not be enforced against citizens of the six Muslim majority countries who had a bona fide relationship with those in the U.S. The court held that this latest iteration of the Muslim ban violated the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment uh, to the U.S. Constitution. Under the Establishment Clause, the government cannot favor or disfavor any religion. This ban clearly discriminated against Muslims, and the court agreed with us last night. This ruling means that a daughter will now be able to join her Syrian family in Columbus. Yes. We welcome this ruling and are very happy for our plaintiffs. While this is an encouraging development, we still need permanent action. The decision to include North Korea and Venezuela in this latest ban is simply a distraction a pretext to hide the fact that it is a Muslim ban. Only 100 visas or so were issued from North Korea in 2016. And only some government officials in Venezuela are covered by this ban. Muslim ban 3.0 does not make America any safer. There is no demonstrable evidence that nationals from the listed countries currently pose a serious threat to Americans on U.S. soil. Rather, the ban threatens the liberty and safety of American Muslims and other minority groups and will increase Islamophobia here at home. The divisive nature of the president's actions are inexcusable. Muslim Ban 3.0 is effective only in keeping family members apart. It ensures that those who wish to come to this country to be reunited with their children or parents or simply for a better life are barred for no other reason than that they descend from one of the countries noted in the executive order. We call on elected officials at all levels to speak out against this discriminatory ban. Most importantly, we call on the White House to lift the ban and to take note that when the Statue of Liberty reads, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, there is no mention of religion, race, or nationality. We will not be divided, and we will continue to stand up for what is right. Thank you. My is Jacqueline Kifuko. Kifuko is K-I-F-U-K-O. I'm originally from Uganda. Currently, I'm working as a refugee migrant organizer with co uh, community refugees and immigration services. I'm glad to be surrounded by loving people. Um, before I came to the US, I was a refugee in uh, Kenya. And I understand when they mention the word refugee, living a life of hopelessness and uh, fear. Because in most cases, when you flee your country, you run to camps close to your country you're running from. So. Um, standing with the Muslims today, I'm showing my solidarity and urging the, legislat the legislators today that there's no need to stand against Muslims. These are people. When we mention Muslims, when we mention refugees, we are talking about human lives. And having been a refugee for three, uh, three years, my life was exposed to imminent dangers. I completely understand what it means living a life of hopelessness compared to the life where you wake up loved, cared for, and uh, you have a hope to plan for the future. My, many refugees, when they um, in the camps, you have no right. The countries that host you also have their own problems. They cannot think about refugees before they think about their own people. And uh, today, we are talking about the 1.19 refugees whose lives are in danger. According to the UNHCR, 65 refugees are registered globally. But 1.19 in their host countries still are at risk of death. 
because they are close to the countries where they ran away from. Um, UNHCR, UNHCR records indicate the highest number of refugees from, are from Syria and Afghanistan. These are Muslims. So meaning we are blocking this, this huge number of refugees from getting to the, UN, to, to the US. Re, uh, granting a refugee a chance to have a hope is the most, most, uh, you can ever hope over to the family. It's the most, <clears throat> when I woke up one day and I was told, Jackie, you're going to the US, my hopes were raised. Mm. I was so happy knowing tomorrow I'm waking up to, to buy something for my son. Mm -hmm. I'm a single mom, but as a refugee, I could not even offer food to my boy because I could not breastfeed him. I didn't have enough food for him, you know? But prior to my flight, it was canceled. And the message said, till further notice. That was because of the, uh, the bans, the, the refugee bans that were going on. I can just imagine somebody who wakes up and the, the message is, you never get out of the camp. You never have a hope for tomorrow. Your children forever will be refugees. Your children will never see light out of this camp. Think about it. When you're taking food with your children on the table, think about that one child who wakes up. You know, I always focus on children because none of them gets to know who he is, not until he's told you're a refugee, you're in the camp. And this is, the, the, this is where you've been gazetted. You're like an animal. You don't get outside a certain, you know, you have the boundaries controlling you. You had a chance. Many have been in the queue. I talk to many. They tell me they don't know what tomorrow holds. You don't have any other chance. So many are living in depression, and so many are hoping for suicide. Why? No hope for tomorrow. So when you think about the ban, think about the human lives. Thank you. My name is Jason Ridley, and I pastor the Hilltop Community Worship Center. Uh, as a Christian minister of the gospel, I find it disturbing and ironic that in a country where many, uh, by and large, profess Christianity and Christian values, in a country uh, where our leaders, both in the White House as well as in the halls of Congress, uh, profess Christianity as their faith tradition, yet many of their laws and decrees are not bathed in the spirit or essence of what Christianity is all about. Because at its core, our belief, for those of us who are Christian, is that because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, we are no longer banned. We no longer face banishment. But not for this reason alone. Because I also find it disturbing and ironic today that in this country, the United States of America, which was founded on the principles, on the, on the principle of freedom of religion, a tradition and ideal uh, that forms the foundation of our country, where you have the right to choose to believe whatever you want to believe, and it cannot be held against you. Yet we have a current administration that is trying to do everything within its power uh, to ban Muslims from this country. Because make no mistake about it, this is not a travel ban, but it's a Muslim ban, which at its core is both unconstitutional and not representative of true Christian values and beliefs. And that's why I stand here today with clergy from other faith traditions, and I stand here with my Muslim brothers and sisters in denouncing this immoral, racist, discriminatory ban, which impacts not just Muslims, but refugees as well, who many are trying to flee their homeland for safety, but are being denied access to this country because of their beliefs. And it's unfortunate today uh, because most of them are good people, just like majority of the Muslims in this country who are genuine good people. And they deserve to be treated with the same dignity, fairness, and respect as any other American. As a matter of fact, we even share a lot of the same hopes and desires, which include an opportunity to give back to our community and country and create a bright future for their children 
and grandchildren, and that's really what the American dream is all about. But right now, this reality is difficult for our Muslim brothers and sisters because they have been singled out because of their faith as a result of other people's fear about them because of the color of their skin, the language they speak, and how they pray. The late great Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, wherever racial discrimination exists, it is a tragic expression of man's spiritual degeneracy and moral bankruptcy. The truth today is that this attempted Muslim ban says more about us as Americans than it does about them as Muslims. As a country, we've got to do better than this. We've got to be better than this. And this Christian stands with Muslims. <laughs>